Yeah, the price of chips. I mean, what are you doing? Exactly, the price of chips is almost the price of chips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is the Ossitron from Salisbury Synthesizers. And this is the little expander that rectifies and offsets signals so we get the right unipolar not to 5 volt signals from LFOs for things like the pulse width and the phaser in and the filter. So you get the rectifier and attenuations on these little sort of push, sort of slide wheels, which is interesting. It means you get three of them in a tidy space in 2 HP, something a little bit different. But first, let's check out the sound of this thing. Glitchy, lo-fi, dirty, full of character. Really quirky and interesting in my mind, so let's check this out. Here's the first bank of waveforms, no filtering, no downsampling. second bank accessed by going to bank on this sort of select switch and then this is the range or value of the thing you're selecting such as filter type the course tuning range the quantizer and so on so green bank basic wave and we've got this pulse width you can see sort of half wave rectifies and pulses out this saw phaser like a kind of down sampled super saw effect sounds good we've got filtering which we select the filter and then we select filter type on there and the filter types are actually on this circle we've got no filter and a low pass listen to that sort of noise and quantizing in the filter that's deliberate and it adds loads of character that's there when you modulate it as well let's add some resonance It'd be really obvious this sort of quirky step in. It's nice and throaty, it makes the filter really vocal. High pass. Band. This is a notch. And then a parametric EQ that's got 10 dB of gain. dB of gain on a parametric EQ. This has got 100 dB of gain. Got a low shelf to that low end fatten out. Low shelf with more gain. High shelf. More gain. 
again, again. And then this is a Butterworth low pass filter. Butterworth high pass filter. A bezel low pass filter. And a bezel high pass. Leave this on low pass for now. The tuning is done with the fine tune and a range select. So we slide round to tuning. We have a high and a low range. Sounds to me like we've got a quantizer on. Let's take that off. We get a wave crusher. Various downsampling and bit reduction. Notice the steps in that are different for the downsampling to say that one. can adjust it so that the wave crusher becomes before or after the filtering as well as this phaser effect as well so you can sweep into that bit crushing and down sampling or you can choose not to I should say at this point as well that the clock input and the CV inputs can be rearranged and sort of hacked within software that this is running on. And you can pretty much make this thing do what you want regarding CV over different parameters. All the manual and everything that comes with it is great. It's nice to see a nice printed manual and a quick reference and a note on what everything on the expander does in the box as well as it all on the website. We can also select what this internal audio engine is running at. So let's just pull this sound back up. So we've got 16 bit on zero, 32, 64, and 128. Let's listen to that in 8 bit. Compared to. So you can actually change what it's running on as well to get various different sounds. There's loading and saving patches, which can be done again all around this wheel. And I'll zoom in and get the quick start guide and the image of this wheel up right on screen so you can see how clear this is. And let's get into some patches. We'll look at the quantizing and we'll look at the portamento as well. So let's check out the various quantizer modes. We're up in quantizer, value set to zero. And this is what's coming in, just a ramp LFO. That's no quantizing. Number one's chromatic. Then major. Harmonic minor. Natural minor. Whole tone. Pentatonic Blues Hexatonic Blues Heptatonic Just a major triad Minor triad Diminished seventh, augmented triad, just root and fifth, and then just the root, so octaves. So that's quantizing this Volt Proctive input 
which is great if you're using random sources or analog sequences, you get this right in key and right in tune straight away. Let's turn the quantizing off, hit the button to go to the green setting, which is the glide. We can slow that portamento down, so let's change our input wave. Let's move it to something much faster. Can add just some random stepping. Now if I turn up portamento, this will start to slide and glide and slew or slur, there's various different words for this, between its values. It's all got this nice glitchy top end. You could run that through a low pass gate or a filter to get rid of it, but I really like that it's in there, it's different. So that's the tuning and the portamento. Let's take a look at the continual sampling. You can sample waveforms into this thing. But I want to check out just running audio in which, although completely unrelated to a vocoder, gives a similar effect. So here I've got a basic sort of shuffled brushes on a snare drum kind of beat. Here's the dry sound. And here's what's coming out of the Ossitron. So I've gone up to the settings for the continual wave sampling. Now we can actually trigger and sample around a zero crossing point and get single cycle waveforms or multiple cycle wavetables that we can sort of move between. But by hitting continual sample, this is what we get. A sort of constant analysis of the incoming audio. We still get that really glitchy, dirty filtering. and the wave shaping, or wave crushing. Let's change to a high pass. We can still change the sort of rate of these samples. Listen now that quality is different. They're longer samples, so the sort of bits of audio it's sampling tend to be longer. This sounds a little smoother, but not as interactive. That's really quick and chopping into the audio more, so it's a little noisier. Found around four tends to get me there. Let's move across to a video with me and Tony Rolando from Make Noise chatting at Superbooth so we can hear what speech sounds like. Here's my input. But as time went on, CDs became the same price as cassettes and then cassettes were phased out and suddenly CDs sounded amazing. They sounded as good as anything. A little bit driven, but you can hear the dry voice. And here's what I'm getting. Uh, what's available to hardware developers in the 80s to do a 24-bit so this is the audio in, the sort of rate at which we're sampling. Very gargling, noisy, not very intelligible. We can't really hear the diction in the voice. That sounds too much like just sort of sampling whole modulation on a digital wave. So like I said, around four... Yeah, the price of chips coming way up. Exactly, the price of chips is almost the price of chips. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. <laughs> Try in again. So I think now that that we've got mixed together. I think now really what we have to concentrate on is well, what's worth doing digitally and what's worth doing in analog. And some things are just so easy and fun to do in analog that why would you want to develop them digitally? And some things are so hard to do in analog or maybe even impossible uh, to where you say, yeah, well, we have to do this with uh, digital signal. So you have some really cool. Again, glitchy, full of character. It's not clean in any way, this thing. Vocoder-like sounds, although it's completely unrelated to how a vocoder works. But that's a sort of robotic voice effect that you get. So let's set up the sampling of a single cycle waveform. We're currently just on a sine wave. Straight into my output. Well, into the data scope and then into my output. Nice, dirty, digital, all that character's still there. 
but it's just a sign just to sort of prove what the starting point is and how this is going to be different when we sample a wave in. Now I've got an FM patch from Brains, which if I turn this channel on, you currently see that blue overlay, it's a sine wave, very much like the Salisbury Sims, very much like the Ossetron. If I turn up the FM, and we just listen to Braids now, nothing to do with the Ossetron. That's the FM wave that we've got. So I'm going to go back to listening to the Ossetron. I'm going to patch out of this mull on data into the input of the Ossetron. Go up to the sample input, and this is the sample length that we can set and look at. And again, the manual's great for this. I'll pull something up on screen for that. Now we could clock this or trigger this, and it's going to look for zero crossing points in the wave. I'm just using an offset generator. You could hear that fire as soon as I plugged it in. So if I take all this out, listening to the Ossetron that's going straight into the scope. Let's just turn this channel off. We've sampled that wave. We can do the wave crushing. Let's do that again, so I'm not going to save this, but set the wave crush back to zero, back to a sign, filter wide open, so currently, no input, no clock in, out of the Ossetron, just into the data so you can see what's happening. If I patch into the second channel on the data, again this is braids, I'm going to move this cable, go into my output. So we're listening to braids. Again, nothing to do with the Ossetron. Let's find a different mode this time. That croaky wave there will do. So I'm going to patch back in to listen to the Ossetron. Patch this copy of braids into the input. And like I said, you can use a trigger or a clock or a gate or even an offset generator into this clock in. When I turn up my offset generator, it's going to hit this voltage and it's going to sample this waveform. So again, if I take all this out, just to prove that that's what's going on, I turn that channel off. Let's make this one bigger. That was braids, now sampled inside the Ossetron. We'll apply the pulse width mod, the phaser, the filtering. We've got the sort of floppy disk looking thing where we can just quickly hit load to load the patch or preset around there or long hold to save it and you can factory reset all this stuff again this is all in the manual which actually a good read well presented by Salisbury Sims so that goes through the sampling the waveforms the filtering we've talked about some of the modes but I can't possibly show all the modes because this video would be quite long because it's such a capable unit let's just delve into some patches to finish on
like and subscribe for more videos every week. Check out the Patreon link if you want to support my channel and cheers for watching.